morning everybody uh, let us start uh, with the other part of the crystal plus plasticity so so far we have discussed crystal imperfection and the slip system uh, in crystal imperfection specifically uh, we explain that the different type of defects uh, exist with the within the crystal lattices uh, that imperfections or defects can be classified like uh, point defects line defects and surface defects so several point defects we have explained and then line defects we have tried to explain in terms of uh, dislocations and then how dislocation is characterized in terms of the burgers vector and finally we have uh, described the surface defects for example the green boundary can be considered as a surface defects exist in the crystal lattices so with the basic concepts of the defects we have started to analyze the plasticity in the crystal structure and further we have analyzed the slip system that actually associated with the deformation of the crystals and we have looked into the different slip planes and the slip directions for the very basic crystal structure for example fcc bcc and acp structures and we have observed that to basic types of dislocation for example edge dislocation and screw dislocations and accordingly we have defined the different crystal planes where actually there is a deformation of the uh, lattices happens with the application of the external load and this deformation we have experienced in terms of the shear stresses and for a specific type of crystal structure there is some specified slip plane over which and specified direction over which basically the uh, slip occurs and we have seen there is a several combination or different type of slip system in BCC, FCC and ACP crystal structure. So in continuation with that slip system now we shift to the next uh, topics that is dislocation geometry and energy stress field due to dislocation dissociation of the dislocation and dislocation mechanics will be explained as a part of the crystal plasticity with the last class uh, we have simply explained the very basic types types of the uh, different crystals and their defects and now we'll stick with the very basic terms generally used to explain the dislocation geometry and energy and uh, corresponding to the stress field generated to the uh, existence of the dislocations now let us look into this first, first very two topics first we'll just try to uh, start with the dislocation geometry energy by looking into that main key points on the deformation of single crystal so first significant points is that initial yield stress actually varies from sample to sample depending upon the position of the lattice relative to the loading axis this is the one key point for the deformation of single crystal and second point is that we have observed that the shear stress actually resolved along the slip direction on a specified slip plane and that actually initiate the plastic deformation in a single crystal structure and next important point is that yield will actually begin on a slip system when the shear stress exists some critical value that is called critically resolved shear stress and that critical value actually independent of the tensile stresses or any other normal stresses that actually acting on the lattice one. That is the most significant point to analyze the slip system or 
deformation of a single crystal structure. So, point here is that we we simply separating the critically shear stress resolved shear stress value and with respect to the application of the other normal stress normal stresses in a single crystal structure. Now, if we look into the term the dislocation energy definitely when there is a existence of the dislocation in a single crystal structure it is associated with some amount of the strain energy and then we will try to explain the or to we will try to roughly estimate the amount of the strain energy associated with with the screw dislocation and edge dislocation basically the screw dislocation and edge dislocation is the basic two elements or maybe ideal cases of the dislocation and that we can further complicated calculation starts with these two type of basic uh, dislocation first when we try to explain the energy associated with the screw dislocation simply we can consider a cylinder around the dislocation and we actually divide into the two different zone one is the core of the dislocation another is the uh, elastic deformation zone so the central core of dislocation actually is not considered in this elasticity uh, in this calculation using the elasticity theory because that core actually the existence of the core lies within the few lattice spacing or maybe it is down to the atomic scale, atomic scale. So, continuum elasticity theory may not be applicable uh, to estimate the energy associated with the core. So, then core radius is roughly most of the materials is around 5 times of the Burgers vector for a specific material and the energy of the core is actually estimated empirically uh, or we try to correlate the amount of the energy associated with the core with respect to the uh, other part of the uh, energy estimation for example outside of the core. Now <coughs> how to estimate the energy associated with the screw dislocation. So, if we look into the representation of the screw dislocation, we can see that dislocation exists along z axis and the Burgers vector which is parallel to the z axis is acting on acting here if you look into this Burgers vector. Now, we can simply explain this thing if it is caught along the periphery and open it off. This is the total the height or this length actually represents that y pi r and b here is the Burgers vector and we have considered one element with respect to the z axis at a distance r and then uh, elemental radius or elemental radius is dr. So, unrolled screw dislocation is represented the right hand side figure and here if you see their existence only of the engineering shear strain on that theta z plane and we can estimate that from the bas very basic definition how to define the shear strain here is that Burgers vector divided by the perpendicular length. So, here perpendicular length is the by it comes from the simply opening the the elemental segment and that segmental length is twice pi into r and then b by twice pi r is actually represents the shear strain in this case. So, this is the very ideal case and then only non-zero shear stress exists in this case 
that is tau theta z on this plane so that can be estimated in terms of the shear modulus and the shear strain so this is the simply estimation of the shear non zero shear stress in case of the screw dislocation but what is the associated energy so once we consider if you look into that along the radial distance r we basically consider one elemental segment of radial distance dr and looking into that elemental area we can find out that strain energy associated with the small element ele radial element dr is simply integration of the stress and strain so this is the actually the elemental uh, 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 with a small element the amount of the strain energy which is multiplied by the stress into element of the shear strain here uh, it can be like that that we have i think we have already explained that if this is the y axis and x axis so area of specified curve can be or small element area can be represented like that integration of y dx so that y dx actually represents the elemental area and if we integrate over the limit then we can estimate the total area occupied by this specified curve so similar things similar things we can represents here in terms of the strain and stress axis and then over the strain and stress axis the elemental area actually represents here tau into d uh, d gamma that is the representation of the amount of strain energy for unit volume now once we integrate over so this actually represents the amount of the uh, strain energy per unit volume so if we look into that further calculation we can find out that we put in the shear strain value and we can find out the amount of the strain energy associated with the in terms of the uh, burgers vector and the radial distance r over which the elements is considered now this elemental volume can be calculated is like that twice pi r is the periphery and l is extended the length of the dislocation or here we can say the length of the axis length of the cylinder and if you multiply by dr that actually represents the elemental volume and so elemental total energy if you multiply by the elemental volume then we can find out that total elemental energy is like expression is represented like this now the energy per unit length of the screw dislocation can be represented like this and where the radial distance actually is varies from r0 to r so r0 can be considered the from the uh, as a radius of the core and r up to what extent the effect of the dislocation exists so some finite value of r actually exists here and if we integrate over r0 to r we can find out this is the expression of the dislocation energy associated to the screw dislocation so this can be further represented by approximately the alpha into g b square or normally the alpha varies from 5 to 1 and normally r0 that means core radius can be considered as the 5 times of the 
Burger spectrum. This is the typical calculation or very simplified way we are we can or assuming the theory of elasticity we can estimate the amount of energy associated with the screw dislocation now how we can further estimate on the how we can further estimate on the limit of this uh, core or R for by to looking into the very typical example. So, since the estimation of the elastic energy did not consider the energy associated with the core. So, total amount of the energy practically for screw dislocation consists of the two parts. One is the energy associated with the core, another is the energy associated with the elastic strain. So, total energy is decomposed into two parts core energy and the elastic strain energy. So, so far we have calculated the elastic strain energy. Now, how to estimate the energy of the core? Just look into that. But before that, the energy dislocation energy is generally estimation is that we have already shown that this is the estimation and we consider the some constant term alpha and that alpha is normally considered as a half uh, until and unless the information available for estimation of this alpha which we, we can consider alpha as a 0.5 or a half here. This is the rough estimation. Now, how to estimate the lower limit of R0 and upper limit of R, some physical reasoning for that. If we look into that estimation of the elastic energy for screw dislocation and if R0 equal to 0 or if R tends to infinity in both the cases, the strain energy per unit length actually tends to infinity. Even also, if strain, total strain is tends to infinity when R0 equal to 0. That means, when R0 equal to 0, this, uh, at this point, the elastic, uh, the amount of the strain is infinity. But practically, it is not reasonable. So, energy cannot be higher than that of the heat of vaporization. So, with this typical analogy, we can further represent the amount of the energy du or dw and with respect to the radial distance r. So, du by dr here. So, here du or dw, they both are equivalent. We have used the other symbol here. So, that ratio du by dr is basically some other parameters are constant and it is proportional to the 1 by r. So, if you proportional to the 1 by r, then this right hand side actually represents the typical variation. If you look into that, du by dr, 1 by r into some constant term, because CR modulus, Burger vectors for a specific material can be considered as a constant term here. So, at r tends to 0, it becomes infinity. But actual, there is a finite value of the amount of the strain energy. So, actual figure, actual du by dr can be considered as here. So, with respect to the actual du by dr and to compensate the amount of the that uh, energy with respect to the theoretical calculation, we can simply uh, compensate the amount of the overestimation and amount of the actual amount of the core energy. Looking into this balance of this energy, we can find out that over the region 0 to R, R0 is equal to the overestimation of the integral R greater than R0. And then in this case, if we consider R0 equal to By4, but this is the typical calculation, not necessary, always R0 should be the By4. Here the objective is to show how we can estimate this calculation. Now the upper limit of R is normally considered as the half of the distance between the 
two consecutive dislocations so that assume that between the two consecutive dislocation the effect of the energy associated with these things exactly midpoint between the two dislocation and when it's just cross the midpoint that amount of the energy associated to the next dislocation so it is quite reasonable to assume that the extent of the upper limit of the dislocation is midway between the two dislocations now if we assume that r equal to 10 to the power 5 into b corresponds to the dislocation density for a specific sample is 10 to the power 10 1 by meter square in this case we can simply find out r by r0 so here r is specified r0 is specified and from that specified value we can find out that logarithm of r by r0 is roughly 4 pi so this estimation shows that u by l equal to g b square so this estimation actually if we look into that previous calculation that alpha g b square here and we have already mentioned that alpha is lies between the point 5 to 1 so this calculation actually following the limit so this is the typical estimation of the uh, energy per unit length in case of the screw dislocation but in general we use the energy per unit length of dislocation is basically half of g b square now we will come to that point of the estimation of the energy for the edge dislocation first we will try to represent the idealized edge dislocation component if you look into this figure here one entire plane has been exactly pushed into the other planes above which the sliding or gliding plane but not below that so over this plane if you look into the existence of the compre compression here and the dislocation line actually represents along the x3 axis and the Burgers vector B represents here which is basically following that perpendicular to the dislocation line here. But in this case it is necessary to consider the Poisson's effect which yields 1 by nu term in the denominator. So nu is basically here the Poisson's ratio and looking into that Poisson's effect we can estimate the similar way the energy associated with the edge dislocation. Now point is that why the Poisson's effect comes into to estimation when you try to estimate the dislocation energy associated with the edge dislocation. If we look into the stress field associated with the edge dislocation which is different from the screw dislocation. We will discuss for the further slides but point is that we consider the effect of the Poisson's effect here to estimate the associated energy in case of the edge dislocation and in case edge dislocation that we simply multiplying by the denominator 1 minus new term that is the due to the effect of the Poisson's ratio. Now approximate estimation g b square by 2 into 1 minus u but here basically approximate estimation this logarithm term we generally uh, that roughly we can estimate at the around 2 pi so that it is if you exclude the 1 minus mu term it is actually equal to the associated strain energy in case of the screw dislocation. Now if we consider mu equal nu equal to 1 by 3 that means Poisson's ratio is 1 by 3 that actually in case of the most of the materials then we can find out that energy associated with the edge dislocation is more than that of the screw dislocation and it is basically normally it is 1.5 times of the screw dislocation. Now this is also for the typical calculation to make the understanding of the how to estimate the energy associated with the edge dislocation. Here if we see 
that total energy in case of s dislocation again it is consist of the core plus elastic energy and normally the core energy can be considered as a 10% of the total energy so estimation of the g b square by 10 and in this is the this is true for the screw dislocation and s dislocation g b square by 1 minus u if mu equal to 1 by 3 so these are the typical estimation of the different parameter score that that will associate with the uh, <coughs> core energy amount of the core energy and associated with the screw dislocation and associated with the s dislocation so finally here also we can see that s dislocation is the 1.5 times of the screw dislocation but if we represent this as a right side figure as a dislocation and there is a line tension t acting on these things which is equivalent to the amount of the strain energy per unit length if you look into this thing the unit consistency in this case also you can find out the strain energy strain energy per unit length is basically line tension in case of the or can be represented as a line tension in case of the dislocations now we will shift to the how to estimate the energy of the mixed dislocation because this is the more most practical cases and if we look into the any sample because we can find out that in case of mixed dislocation is the can be represented to the consist of the ideal case of edge and the screw dislocation so actually when you try to estimate the mixed dislocation and here we can assume that the interaction between the edge and screw dislocations are neglected and to looking in to looking into or to considering or to consider this assumptions we can find out that there is a one dislocation b within the dislocation loop is the consists of the two parts one is the edge dislocation another is the screw dislocation and of course this uh, screw dislocation is the this is the part screw dislocation is this one screw dislocation is the big cos theta and the s dislocation is b sin theta here and approximately we can find out the dislocation energy for the mixed dislocation is the consist of that this is the energy associated with the s dislocation and this is energy associated with the screw dislocation and we can find out the mixed dislocation is the to some extent in terms of the angle angle theta here but here we need to define the angle theta so this is the typical way we can estimate the or most simplified way we can estimate the uh, dislocation energy associated with the mixed dislocations now with this theory of the estimation of the dislocation energy we will try to make uh, understand that how we can use this uh, theoretical knowledge to estimate the energy associated with the one, one specific practical problem let us look into that very physical problem here that calculate the strain energy for unit dislocation length associated with the screw dislocation in a metallic crystals of copper having lattice parameter a equal to 0.361 nanometer cr modulus of copper is given but here the the information like that this energy is negligible beyond the 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter and the non elastic core energy dominates at distance smaller than 1.6 nanometer so from this statement 
what we can estimate these things. From this statement, we can find out that energy is negligible beyond certain length. That means beyond certain length in the sense that energy associated with the beyond length may be subjected to some other dislocations, uh, <coughs> dislocation or maybe part of the dislocation associated with the one specific sample. So that statement actually defines the limit of the R. So R is defined that term 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter. And second assumptions that the non-elastic core energy dominates at distance smaller than 1.6 nanometer. This actually defines the size of the core. So here R0 is basically 1.6 nanometer uh, above who is the we can apply the elastic theory to estimate the strain energy. So once from the statement we can find out the capital R or small r0 then simply we can put the amount of the dislocation energy per unit length we can find out. But other information shear modulus is the material property that we can readily available and we can use that shear modulus value. But here we need to find out the B, B means the magnitude of the Burgers factor. So here the material is copper and we know that the copper is having FCC crystal structure and once we know the crystal structure and we can easily find out the full Burgers factor in this case. So for FCC crystal structure, how to estimate the full Burgers vector? To do that, uh, we need to define what may be the slip plane in case of FCC structure, and that is 1, 1, 1, that is the slip plane, and what may be the paper slip direction, that is 1, 1, 0. So, paper slip direction equal to 1, 1, 0. And that 110 is basically indicates the along the face diagonal. So along the face diagonal, the typical along the face diagonal, the typical arrangement of the atoms is like this. So here the one layer of the atom displacement or half plane of the atoms displacement is can be considered as this one. So one, this is the shortest repeat distance along the phase diagonal. So that shortest repeat distance along the phase diagonal represents the Burgers vector here. So once we know the phase diagonal is basically the root 2 into lattice parameter or edge length and half of that, this actually represents the Burgers vector. So once the A is given, so that means lattice parameter is given and from there we can find out the Burgers vector. So then if we magnitude of the Burgers vector and if we put it here and we can find out the elastic energy associated with the screw dislocation in this case. So, so once we can estimate or typically estimate the amount of the strain energy associated with the edge and screw dislocations. Now we will try to focus on that what is the stress field associated with the dislocations. So since the dislocations is associated some amount of the strain and associated some amount of the strain energy, so of course it is important to analyze the stress field generated by the presence of dislocation and how we can represent this stress field in the different to idealized case that means in case of age and screw dislocation. Now stress field, to estimate the stress field, the crystal lattice is distorted in the presence of the dislocations and the, of course here also stress field we can estimate simply by using the elasticity theory and we assuming that that elasticity theory is applicable from a radial distance about 5B that means beyond the core. 
in case in <coughs> case of age or school dislocation and in this case definitely we are ignoring the effect of the uh, elastic stress as within the dislocation core and that one important point is here the applied stress on the slip plane actually exhaust a force on the dislocation line which corresponds to the moving or changing the shape or maybe displacement of the layer of atoms. Now interaction of the stress field of course here we will try to analyze these things uh, due to the dislocations and there is that actually results in the either repulsive or the attractive forces during the interaction of the two different dislocations or maybe stress field of the dislocations. Now, significant findings from the interaction of the stress field, you can explain these things. The S dislocation is attract basically interstitial impurity atoms dispersed in the lattice and this may be significant in case of the interstitial solute solution between the carbon and atoms. So, looking into all the significant points, let us look into the stress field associated with the screw dislocation. If you look into that figure, that this is the actual representation of the screw dislocations and where if you see the AB actually represents the dislocation line and the Burger spectrum actually represents the parallel to the dislocation line. Now idealized case is like that, it represents these things in the screw dislocation one cylindrical element and we define the core and out of core zone to different zone with respect to the z axis. So actually when you try to estimate the stress field due to the screw dislocation here also we use the elasticity theory and the with the ideal representation of the uh, screw dislocation in this case we can find out the stress this is the normal stress field here that consists of the normal stress and the shear stress component and we can e exchange or interchange between the cylindrical coordinate system to the Cartesian coordinate system by looking into that simple this transformation relation. Now, here if you see the, if we represent the uh, dislocation line along the z axis and Burger's vector also parallel to the z axis. So, in the Cartesian coordinate system, we can find out the stress field is like that. There are no normal stresses and there exist only the two shear stress component because of the pure shear along the z directions. If you look the pure shear, since there is a pure shear along the z direction, so shear stress component associated with the xz or yz exist in this case, but the shear stress associated with the xy plane is zero here. So this is the typical stress state in the Cartesian coordinate system in case of screw dislocation. But if we look into that cylindrical coordinate system, here also we see there are no normal stress component, and only the shear stress component on the theta z plane. Now, if we look into that, the screw dislocation or representation of the stress field associated with the screw dislocation and over the Cartesian coordinate system. So right hand side figure if you see this is the ideal representation of the screw dislocation on the Cartesian coordinate system and here if you see the two shear stress component is like that in terms of the coordinate x, y and shear constant term shear modulus g and the Burger's vector b and if you look into their distribution 
if we see that the figures typical sigma xz or maybe the shear stress on the xz plane the red color actually this side defines this side defines the positive value that means tensile stress field and right hand side represents actually the compressive stress field that negative value indicates this is the uh, schematically representation of the stress field associated with the screw dislocation and similarly the stress field associated with the yz is like that also red color represents the tensile st stress field and it's the negative or the compressive stress field so like that now if we try to estimate that the stress field associated with the screw dislocation by assuming that the cylindrical shape of the elastic body and here if you introduce the screw dislocation along the AB and if we find out this is the actual representation or maybe uh, there is a area of the dislocation over which the stress field actually exists. This is the representation by the first cylinder element and second is the actual representation of the dislocation line and the Burgers vector in case of the screw dislocation. Now we observe that actually with this axis configuration the shear stress exists actually along the z directions. Now it will be more easy to understand the estimation of the shear stress specifically in case of the uh, cylindrical coordinate system. Now simply if you look into that uh, a cylindrical element if we if we simply open it up the cylinder element and the representation of these things Burgers vector B here L is the length that means length of the dislocation along the axis and this actually represents the height actually represents the periphery perimeter the 2 i spire. So with this configuration of the basic configuration of the estimate the shear strain or shear stress is like that shear strain is basically now B by 2 i spire which is equal to the tan theta so this angle actually represents by theta and shear stress accordingly. So this is the simple way we can find out the shear stress associated with the screw dislocation. Now so far in last slide maybe we have not considered the effect of the core to estimate the shear stress. Now we estimate the shear stress existing next to the dislocation core of a screw dislocation. Here for example suppose R0 equal to if we assuming that the elastic theory also exists within the core itself and assuming that R0 equal to B. So size of the core is equal to B. So in this case we can simply estimate that shear stress associated with the screw dislocation is a G by 2 I spy. Actually this is the limit of the theoretical strength either that means the limit of the validity of the elastic continuum mechanics. So that theoretical strength we have already estimated when we try to explain the slip system exists within the crystal structure in we have already estimated this thing g by twice per is the theoretical limit of the strength. So by with this analogy if we put r0 equal to b then theoretically we can estimate the what is the strength of a strength or theoretical limit or theoretical strength of the uh, one specific lattice by look by analyzing the uh, stress field associated with the screw dislocation. But practically this is uh, theoretical strength is actually g by twice pi is different from the in, in experimental measurement of the theoretical strength of a 
single crystal lattice so there may be the uh, due to the assumptions for this estimation but this is the very idealized case for this limitation now if we look into that stress field associated with the edge dislocation similar way we can consider as a hollow cylinder uh, around the dislocation and exclude the core due to the plastic strain in this calculation or in this estimation but if we look into that the stress field associated with the edge dislocation there exists of the normal stress comp component and one shear stress component so that stress field actually is different from the screw dislocation and if we look into that or if you try to estimate the stress field associated with the edge dislocation we can find out further that that typical expression of these things sigma xx sigma yy normal stress and sigma zz using considering the effect of the poisson's ratio here but which is different from the screw dislocation and we can find out sigma xy that is the shear stress variation and the shear strain component these are the typical estimation of the different components of the stresses that we can easily estimate but to do that or specific observation here is that dislocation actually elastic stress field we assuming that the exist in an infinite body and in this case calculation the core region is ignored that i already mentioned that but this calculation indicates that having the singularity at x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 but however the real material cannot bear bear such singular stresses so in this case theoretically we can estimate or we can apply this theoretical estimation practically if we neglect the estimation at the core and of course we have already mentioned there is a some finite size of the core exist over which the elasticity of theory cannot be applied so that can be excluded assuming there is the existence of the singularity at that core region this is the typical uh, distribution of the uh, stresses uh, in, in case of the edge dislocation if we look into that similar there is a with respect to the one edge dislocation one sided there exists some positive values and another side is a negative value that means one side is a compressive another side is a negative uh, uh, tensile so similarly in case of sigma yy these are the distribution of the stresses and all are represented schematically so but calculation shows that typically the region near the dislocation has stresses of the order of the gigapascal so we can uh, maybe realize that this theoretical estimates represents that near about the core region the stress exists in the order of gigapascal now after looking into that stress field on the edge and screw dislocation we will try to estimate the hydrostatic stresses in the screw dislocation and hydrostatic stress in case of the edge dislocation so to do that representation of the coordinate system here is a cylindrical coordinate system uh, in terms of r theta z and we assume that the isotopic elasticity at uh, dislocation is represented parallel to the z axis and here we see that shear stress is represented g by 2 pi r that we have already shown how to estimate this thing and of course other component of the stresses are not there only there exist only dislocation along the z axis so this state of equation indicates that the screw dislocation actually 
creates no hydrostatic tension or compression. Simply, if you look into the expression of the hydrostatic stress state, one third of the uh, normal stress component, since all the normal stress components are zero here, so there doesn't exist any hydrostatic stress component in case of the screw dislocation. So, since doesn't exist any hydrostatic stress component, the, there should not be any volumetric strain associated with the screw dislocation. But however, real crystals are elastically anisotropy, so there may be small volume, volumetric strain associated with the screw dislocation. So, with this conclusion from the screw dislo hydrostatic stress in case of screw dislocation, maybe we can consider the hydrostatic stress in case of edge dislocation. So, here edge dis dislocation is represented parallel to the z axis and Parker's vector is parallel to the x axis in this edge dis dislocation. So, with this configuration of the edge dislocation uh, over the uh, stress axis x, y and z, we can find out that the expression of the shear stress is this, expression of the normal stresses and other two shear stress components are 0 here and sigma z can be uh, normal stress is represented in terms of the effect of the poisons here. So, with this expression specific configura configuration uh, of different stresses in case of edge dislocation, we can estimate the hydrostatic stress also here. So, simply the average of the three normal stress component that actually represents the hydrostatic stress and here if we estimate the hydrostatic stress expression is like this. So, where A is a constant term, the constant term is the material parameters, shear modulus and the Poisson's ratio. So, if we represent the distribution of the hydrostatic stress component in case of edge dislocation, we can find out that some contour plot of the hydrostatic stress and upper side actually represents the compressive, lower side is the tensile field. So, this volume actually volumetric strain actually causes the interaction between the edge dislocation of the same sign and tend to form walls from one another. So, several significant explanation uh, can be derived over the estimation of the hydrostatic stress component in case of S dislocation. Let us look into that what is the physical consequence of the hydrostatic stress component in case of the S dislocation. If you look the first significant point is that hydrostatic tension caused by one direction is par partially annihilated by hydrostatic compression of its neighbor. So, lowers the energy level and stable configuration forms a low angle grain bound. This is another significant conclusion from this uh, stress, uh, hydrostatic stress state in case of edge dislocation. But if substitution solid solution occurs here, the solute atoms are attracted by the edge dislocation just above the edge but whether the movement of the solute atoms whether upper above or below the edge dislocation that depends on the size of the solute uh, and solvent atoms. If you look into the question like this small solute atoms is generally attracted on the above the edge dislocation and the large solute atoms is generally attracted below the edge dislocation. So, these are the Typical conclusion can be made from the hydrostatic stress field in case of the edge dislocation. Now, if we look into that, the interaction of the dislocation, but to do that, first we will try to estimate the forces on the dislocation, how we can do that. So, one thing is that of course, applied shear stress actually imparts some amount of the force on the dislocation. So, but if we try to estimate in such a way that motion of the dislocation is 
restricted by the frictional force, then the amount of the work done balance between the by the shear stress and the <coughs> by the frictional force, then we can roughly estimate the amount of the uh, force actually acts on the dislocation due to the application of the <coughs> shear stress. If we look into that figure here, shear stress is acting this direction it is shown and the length over which the one is the length L1, another is the length L2 that constitute one the area over which the shear stress is acting and perpendicular to the length direction L2 that actually replaces the dislocation segment here. Now work done due to the applied shear stress tau is basically applied stress tau into L1 into LT this is the total force due to the applied shear stress and when we multiply by the Burgers vector B, Burgers vector actually here the Burgers vector represents the unit strength that means when the actually atoms travel for the shortest repeat distance that is the representation of the full Burgers vector here. So assuming that the atoms displaced over the full length of the Burgers vector B, so then WT is the amount of the work done with the applied shear stress and <coughs> if we consider the consequence that what will be the frictional resistance here. So F frictional, we assume that F is the frictional force per unit length and that frictional force per unit length it is acting over the length L1. So that is the total frictional force F into L1 and the distance movement in this case in this case equal to L2 here. So if you equate these things we can find out frictional force F equal to per unit, uh, F, F is equal to tau into B that means the shear stress into Burgers vector that means force per unit length. So this is the way we can find out that we represent the frictional force or resistance force per unit length with the applied shear stress. Now how we can do the further analysis in a, uh, a different way? Let us look into that. Dislocation of length L having Burgers vector B on a specified plane over which the shear stress tau is acting on that plane. Now force on the dislocation per unit length can be represented as the dot product between the shear stress in the Burgers vector. Since shear stress can be represented or can be treated as a vector here. So then looking into that dot product we can find out the force on the dislocation per unit length. So that is basically we can we can say equivalently is the frictional force per unit length. Now this shear stress actually results from the stress field of the another dislocation. So point is that here we assuming the applied stress field applied this is this uh, applied stress field tau here but this tau may have the results from the other uh, stress field with the interaction of the other dislocations. So it comes from the externally in the sense that we represent the tau here to estimate the force per unit length in case of the uh, uh, when you try to interact with the another dislocation. So, when two screw dislocations exert an attractive force on each other, now we will try to enter the interaction of the different dislocations. So, 
consider a case that the two screw dislocation they actually exports an attractive force with each other then how we can estimate the force per unit length in this case for example the b2 is the burger's vector of the dislocation concern and other cases the shear stress is actually stress field or stress field is due to the dislocation of burger's vector b1 that shear stress we can easily find out that estimation of the shear stress the gb1 by twice pi r so that shear stress estimation from the burger's vector or one dislocation is tau one and another is the directly consequence that another dislocation which is represented by the burger's vector b2 and with the these two interactions we can represent the force per unit length simply dot product of between these two forces or two vectors then if we look into that and we can make the conclusion that negative sign actually indicates the repel each other if the dot product is positive and that sign configuration actually considered depending upon the uh, <coughs> uh, try to analyze uh, this interaction of the dislocations but to dislocation with this sign convention to dislocation ripple each other if their combination would result in the energy increase now we'll try to enter that the explanation of the interaction of these things in terms of the associated energy that this whether there is a change of the level of the energy with the interaction or the dissociation of the two dislocation is better represented by the frank's rule then try to explain later on but with this configuration of the or sign convention for the present set of the analysis between the interaction of two disc screw dislocation we can say that if angle between the this two burgers vector b1 and b2 is greater than 90 degree then their resultant magnitude is greater should be greater than that of the individual component this is the typical conclusion with the interaction of the screw dislocations now we will try to do into the further analysis with when there is an interaction of the dislocation two dislocations now interaction of the two parallel dislocation parallel edge dislocation it becomes more complex but let us try to explain these things how interaction can be done first we consider one edge dislocation which is parallel to the z axis and b's burger spectrum is parallel to the x axis so in this case the shear stress can be represented like this g by twice by 1 minus nu and x into x square minus y square by x square plus y square this is the that estimation is already explained now the mutual force on that plane due to the interaction of these two s dislocation can be represented like this simply doing the dot product of this now from this we can find out the for the like sign of dislocation if the burger vector dot product greater than zero then we can conclude that there is a mutual repulsion in the region when x greater than y and mutual attracts in the region x less than y so looking into the sign convention we can make several conclusion whether with the interaction of the two dislocation can create some attractive force field or repulsive force field in this case now mutual repulsion actually when you try to link with the energy level mutual repulsion actually the reaction pause and increase of the energy level mutual attraction actually the there is a decrease of the energy level so that can be better explained by the frank's rule now within the interaction of the stress field if you look into these things we can make the right hand side conclusion that there is a attraction and 
these two area repulsion and here also repulsion and these two is the attack so this area can be estimated by simply um, plotting the on the x y coordinate this amount of the force field here and we can define the different zones whether there is the attractive force field or the repulsive force field force field looking into that interaction of the different sd locations now as a simply representation of the dislocation that two like sign dislocation will there exist some repulsion and opposite sign maybe if you can we can consider this as a positive s dislocation and we can consider this as a negative s dislocation so two positive s dislocation they actually exert a repulse with this repulsive force exist between this two positive s dislocation and there may be the attraction between the two opposite side positive or between two opposite sides uh, or two different s dislocation having opposite signs positive or negative so with this we can summarize the dislocation energy and the stress field associated with the dislocation first point we, that the we need to try to analyze or we need to try to estimate the dislocation energy we simply uh, neglect the effect of the core because the elasticity is not applicable within the core region and because the size of the core exists within the few lattice spacing but this core energy can be empirically correlated with the respect to the with reference to the elastic energy outside of the core region second point is the we observed that the energy of an s dislocation is the larger than than of than that of the screw dislocation third point is the stress field is calculated elastic by using the elastic theory and dislocation core is neglected in this calculation fourth point we observed that that applied shear stress on the slip plane exhaust actually creates some force on the dislocation line and we have tried to estimate that force for uh, unit length by analyzing the interaction of the two different dislocations interaction of the stress field of the dislocations is a results of the force which may be attractive which may be the repulsive depending upon the nature of the dislocations whether it is positive or negative whether it is a screw or, or left hand screw or the right hand screw dislocations and finally that from the estimation of the hydrostatic stress field or volumetric strain exist in the edge uh, dislocation we make conclusion that the that presence of the or theoretical estimation of the s dislocation actually explain why the interstitial impurity in case of uh, carbon iron carbon solution whether which point this will be attracted and where the it will be uh, <coughs> sorry where, where it will be attracted depending upon the uh, volumetric positive or negative hydrostatic stress field exist so with this i conclude this estimation of the dislocation energy and the stress field associated with, uh, with this thank you very much for your attention